Hey everybody, it's Marshall Monk here, and this is going to be my It 2 movie review. I'm so excited to review It Chapter 2 for you guys. This is the first movie um, that isn't a comic book movie that I've reviewed in a long time. I haven't really done a non-comic book film in a while. There is so much to talk about about this movie, and we're going to get into it. But you guys know how it works. The first half of the review is non-spoiler. The second half is spoiler. So again... A lot to discuss. Let's get right down to the review. So non-spoilers first. Like my initial thoughts about the idea of what it is that makes this movie uh, what it is. So first of all, It Chapter 2 is the follow-up to the first It. The first It being massively successful. Although what makes this It different is that they've approached the adult versions of the original child characters, which is what they do in the book, which is what they did in the miniseries. So they're going to do it here. It makes sense, right? I did like seeing the adult cast. There's also flashbacks to the uh, kids. That's not a spoiler because that was in the trailers. Um, and it's also just been no knowledge. We'll talk about some of that stuff in the spoiler half because it's it's very spoilery. But I will say some... Well, I'll touch on some things. But anyway, uh, so it follows the adult cast. So it is a lot of a different a, a different story this time around because of this adult cast. Now, I just want you to know, though, the audiences weren't too invested into this cast because this movie came in, well, debuted, uh, and came in 30 million below the first debut uh, for the first It. Uh, so that's an interesting fact that I wanted to throw out there. But It Chapter 2. So there's some good, there's some bad. Let's talk about it. Let's start on a high note and let's do good first. So It Chapter 2 is really good at getting me in the mood for a creepy movie. Not a scary movie, but a creepy one. I was not scared as much in this movie as I was in the first one. And to be honest, I wasn't like crazy scared in the first movie, but I was like kind of creeped out to the point where it did become a little scary. But this movie isn't really that scary. It's just more creepy. And I think that that's what makes it so great is that it's not your typical horror film. It's more of the creepy route, the atmospheric, but not like artistically atmospheric, just the whole, uh, you know, mainstream atmospheric. This movie does play a little bit like a horror version of an Avengers movie just because it is so mainstream and they found a way to do that with a horror film, which is what I love so much about it. It's different than other horror movies out right now. It's not Jason Blum. It's not James Wan. It's not Jordan Peele. It's just so much different than that. And I think that it's on a larger scale than that. And it continues that high note. That was the first movie. It's the second movie too. It has that same mainstream feel, which is what I like so much about these movies. And I'm hoping that they keep making more of them because there's definitely ways. You could do a Pennywise solo film if you wanted to. There's a lot of uh, source material that you could go through. And they've been talking about doing that. So we'll see what they do to keep this franchise going because it's just making so much money. Uh, I also love the fact that they are able to flash back and forth um, because you're keeping the original cast in the loop, which is nice because there's so uh, there's so much chemistry there, and there's a little bit of that chemistry that's brought back into uh, the the new cast, the adult cast. Also about that adult cast, the performances are so electric in this movie, especially Bill Hader and James Ransom. We'll talk about the cast though. Um, a little closer to the end of the non-spoiler half, and then we'll also talk about them in the spoiler half as well. In depth, uh, it's going to be so much fun to talk about them. Bill Hader's my favorite, but we'll talk about it. Again, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Um, but also, I feel like Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise makes these movies. It's very much like the Joker right now. Joker is huge for Warner Brothers right now because it's more of a performance piece and a character study. Pennywise is sort of in that same vein. Not as much as Joker, obviously, because they made it to where that is the fact of why you need to see that movie, but this is kind of the similar ways of that. Pennywise is the main attraction of these films, which is why they might want to do a Pennywise solo film going forward. I mean, they could do it. It just totally makes sense to me um, that they would want to go down that route. Hollywood likes to make money. They're probably going to do it. But Pennywise is great in this film, not because of Bill Skarsgård as the clown himself, but because he makes me believe that Pennywise can do all these different things. There's a lot more illusion with Pennywise in this movie than I think the first film does. I mean, the first film uses that really well, but the illusions here are like really, they're really twist, they're more twisted, they're more clever, especially, uh, there's a scene in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, but there's a scene in the trailer um, where they're at a Chinese restaurant, which I believe was in the in the book as well, but I can't remember. Maybe it was the miniseries, but I don't know. But anyway, um, that scene, oh boy, that was like, that was really good. It was like Spider-Man Far From Home stuff. If you haven't seen that movie, you gotta watch that movie. But anyway, um, I, I love the fact that illusions are popping up more and more in mainstream movies right now. It's so funny. But that was like, 
that, that gave me chills. So I think the illusions of Pennywise and the illusions that are happening, and then Bill Skarsgård performing, his performance ties all that stuff together, and it makes for a really cool experience watching him as the character or watching the character in these different forms. It's really cool. It's awesome. So that's what also sold me on the movie. Also, this movie is so witty and clever with its jokes. I mean, literally. The first movie had a lot of jokes in it that were just so much fun, and the you know, younger cast delivered it so well, um, especially at the age that they were at. So for them to kind of take that clever wit and place it into these characters that are adults now and with different actors was really cool. I really liked it a lot and it shows how much they care about making sure they keep that same energy, which is nice. Um, I liked it a lot because it really did reflect on them being older and younger. And so you really do see that, especially again, Bill Hader and James Ransone. They were just excellent throughout this film. Now, to talk about different characters and different actors, again, my favorites, Bill Hader, James Ransone, Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise, but another fan favorite that I actually liked a lot, I really liked Jessica Chastain, which is so surprising if you know much about me, you know I don't like Jessica Chastain that much as an actress. Um, she, she's very problematic, but I think that this proves that she's kind of becoming... Um, I guess, more recognizable as an actress, but also just better and better each role she gets. I thought she was really good in Dark Phoenix as well, but the problem that she has is that she's just underwritten in every movie that she has been in recently, and so that kind of that kind of irks me a little bit. But then again, Jessica Chastain irks me anyway, right? Um, there's a lot of reasons why I do not like her, but I did like her performance here, and I admit that she actually did really work, uh, good work here as an actress, and I think that it, I think I understand her more as an actress and where she's coming from as a char- you know, as a character performer, as as someone who goes in and becomes this person. She's just really convincingly good here. Like it just it really it really it was really good. I don't know. I can't really put more words into it because I'm just I'm trying not to hate Jessica Chastain here, but you guys know it's kinda hard. But anyway, um yeah, she was really good in this movie. So I enjoyed that as well as the other performances that I, I named out. Also, I really liked the actor who played Henry Bowers, the older version. That's right, he's not dead. Uh, and that's not a spoiler as well because it was in a trailer. So he's not dead. I don't know how that didn't happen if you watched the first It. If you haven't, I don't know why you're here. Um, but I did like his performance as well. I thought it was really good. All right, so that's the good of the movie, right? It's got some good stuff in it. Uh, and I do like the adult cast. So now for the bad of this movie. There's so much bad, it's ridiculous. Okay. This movie is three hours long. This is Avengers Endgame, but a horror movie. I told you. I told you. It's Avengers Endgame, but in a horror film. And the problem with this is that the movie has so many pacing issues. There's too many pacing issues here. The script is so uneven with what it wants to do with the adult versions and the kid versions, especially because those kid flashbacks are kind of inconvenient. I'll get more into that when we get to the spoiler half because I just can't talk about it here it just doesn't it's it doesn't work um there's a lot of spoilers here just like Avengers Endgame again it's just it's very similar uh just the horror version but yes the script is so uneven with what it wants to do with these characters and also this is not really more of a spoiler as it is kind of like a giveaway but they do try to put a lot of the original lore from the story right the book the actual novel in here uh, in this movie, which is kind of inconvenient because they didn't really do that with the first film. I mean, they, I mean, they did, but they kind of made it more simple, more like, you know, when, you know, those jokes in TV shows and movies where it's like, uh, you know, for example, fixing a sink, you know, or fixing pipes for dummies, right? Being a plumber for dummies, right? Or something like that, you know, on a book. That's what they kind of did with the first movie. They just dumbed it down and didn't really focus on the lore too much there. But then they kind of tried to add it here. I'm not going to spoil anything if you haven't seen it or if you haven't read the book or watched the miniseries, but I'm just going to say that they took some of the lore and the mythology and tried to put it in here, and it did not work. It was kind of crammed. It felt crowded uh, in terms of other stuff that was happening in the story. There was also other storylines that we didn't really get to explore involving certain characters, and Jessica Chastain was kind of mad about that. So yeah, the script is just so uneven with what it wants to do uh, in terms of trying to fit everything in. Even with that three-hour runtime, it just doesn't work, and I think that that's kind of disappointing, but also it's kind of embarrassing that you have such this long runtime but you can't fit anything in it. Nothing happens. I mean, nothing really happens uh, with some of these storylines that they tried to do. And it's kind of disappointing. Um, And, you know, when they started off in the beginning of the film with the adult cast, there's just so much happening with what, you know, was unfolding for each of them. And then when they get 
you know, into the motions of the actual movie and, and with Pennywise, that all just kind of slips away. And it's kind of weird because you, you're like, wait a minute, but they were just so close in the first movie and you kind of got everything you needed from those characters when they were kids. Why isn't the same thing happening with the adults? It's just kind of really annoying. Um, and then bringing the kids back in only reminds you of that. And so that's kind of also disappointing. Another thing that I don't like about the, you know, the movie is that the adult versions don't really click at all like the chemistry is just not there like i said earlier it kind of appeared a little bit in the adults uh in the beginning of the movie but it just totally fades away like the chemistry is just not there i mean you don't I mean, to be honest if you haven't seen the first movie and you're kind of just like running into it um i know some people that i talked to uh, earlier this week that were like well i actually haven't even seen the first movie but i might go see the second one i'm like why would you do that doesn't make any sense um but if you were to do that you probably wouldn't have guessed that they were like close friends as much as they were from the first film unless you see the flashbacks it's ridiculous it's just like they took all the charm that was there and kind of started to do it push it a little bit with the beginning of the film and then again it just all slips away it all fades and it's ridiculous um, another spoiler-ish, well, not really spoiler, it's kind of a giveaway, but, I mean, it's kind of obvious, is that, this, you know, throughout the trailers, if you actually pay attention to them and break them down, is that the Losers Club is kind of, like, separated a little bit throughout the film, um, just to make, you know, make up for timing, even though, again, it just doesn't work, and that is a huge killer. It's a huge killer with the chemistry. It's It doesn't do anything. It, it just, again, fades away, um... And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the spoiler or like spoiler half of this review. I can't can't give away too much. I can't give away too much. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of pacing issues. There's a lot of chemistry of the cast issues. Um, even with some of them being friends, like Jessica Chastain and James McAvoy are friends in real life. And as you know, James McAvoy plays Bill, and and she's Beverly, which is part of the love triangle from the first film. There's nothing there. It's just kind of ridiculous. And you're like, aren't you friends in real life? Like, didn't you kind of prepare for this? But they didn't. They didn't do that at all. It's kind of ridiculous. Um, so yeah, there's just not there's not much going on here. And if you're into scary films, again, this movie is just not scary. It's creepy, but not scary. And that's kind of disappointing as well, because the first film kind of had a little bit more scare in it, whereas this is more just kind of like, again, creepy and just atmospheric in a mainstream way, not really like James Wan atmospheric, but it, again, mainstream. It it makes up for it, but it's just not scary to me. I mean, I went with some friends and they were scared, but... I just wasn't. I was like, eh, it's not, it's not, it's not working. I mean, there was one scare that I kind of was like, okay, that was a little, little bit, right? Uh, but overall, it just, again, it doesn't work as much as the first film. So that's some of the bad of the movie. That's the bad. Uh, and now let's get into spoilers. So spoiler alert, if you have not seen It Chapter 2, we're going to dive straight into it. Are you ready? I'm giving you a warning. All right, let's go. So I'm going to start with the performances because, again, I want to talk a little bit about the characters and what that means for the movie. So first of all, Bill Hader deserves an award for this movie. He was so good. He sold the, the dramatic. He sold the comedic. He sold being Richie, like an adult version of, uh, of uh, Finn Wolfhard, right? He sold it. He sold all of it. And I also love they introduced him in this film as an LGBT character. And when they reveal at the end, when his initials carved into the bridge are R plus E after Eddie's death, I was like, okay, you sold me on it. I want to see more Bill Hader as Richie. And I don't know how they're going to do it. Again, I don't know what they're going to do with this franchise going forward. But I know that they're going to they're gonna want to do something with it because it's just so much money, right? Or maybe they won't. Maybe they'll just leave it. Um, but I just need to see more Bill Hader as Richie. Maybe like a mini series, like a like a, another mini series, but for streaming for the HBO uh, streaming service that they're doing with Warner Brothers, like as a whole. Maybe they can do an it show. Um, I would totally watch that, by the way. But yeah, it's just insane uh, how good he was here. And there was just so many jokes. Like for example, with uh, him and James Ransom were at the doors from the first movie in the house of Nebel Street, and they saw like the uh, not scary at all, and then, like all those doors. That was so funny. I almost like fell out of my chair, like ridiculously. It was crazy. Um, so he's really good. Speaking of James Ransom, when he pops into frame in the beginning of the movie, I was like, he's just Jack Dylan Grazer. It's I'm sold on it, which is so surprising because uh, James Ransom is new to the acting scene. He's relatively new. He's not done anything mainstream. Um, but then again, neither has Bill Hader, to be quite honest with you, except for Inside Out. But uh, it's complicated. But anyway, James Ransom was just every note. He hit every note that Jack Dylan Grazer would have hit. And so I was sold on him completely. Jessica Chastain. I am kind of upset about her being underwritten here because she did, again, she did a good job, surprisingly for me. Um, 
and when she was underwritten as a character in the movie there's a six hour cut by the way of this film so if that's released i'm sure there'll be a lot more beverly there but she was also advertised as one of the main characters, like the main star of this film. Like with the first trailer, it was like completely her. So I don't understand how she's underwritten here. But in the book, she's a fashion designer. And so they kind of explore her career a little bit in the book as an adult. And they didn't really do that at all here. And she was in, uh, remember when she was in her abusive relationship with her father and the same thing carries over to her, um, her uh, husband when she grows up and they forget about dairy and all the stuff that happened. That's pretty much all that what made her a character is her relationship with men, right? Whether it was her father, whether it was Bill, whether it was Ben, which I don't know why she ended up with Ben. I mean, I was supportive of it. I loved that they ended up together because I felt like uh, her and um, – ah, what's his name that plays, that plays Ben? I can't remember his name, but I felt like they had a little bit of chemistry too. And I liked how they ended up together because I was rooting for the younger uh, Ben in the first film. So I thought it was great. But anyway, um, with her relationship with Ben and then with her husband – you know, it just, it was so crazy to me how all those relationships really made her as a character and gave her some of the best parts. Like that abusive fight scene in the first part of the movie as an adult for her, that was like crazy to me how good it was, but how she had to rely on a character like that to give her a good moment. And so again, it's just kind of ridiculous. I mean, I did like the part where she broke out of the of the stall, right, from her childhood of the school. Where she broke out of it to help Ben uh, during the fight with Pennywise. But it's still kind of reliant on Ben and not really her as a character. It's ridiculous. She was so underwritten here. It was ridiculous. Uh, and so that that just kind of hurt the character for me. I still thought she did a good job, but eh, not really there. Now, I also, again, loved Pennywise because of the illusions. But when he took out that kid, or both kids, actually, the little girl from the fair and the boy from the restaurant, I was like, holy crap, this movie's going there. Like, it's, it was really on edge for me. And especially the little boy in the funhouse. He just obliterated him. I mean, it was out of nowhere. And to see that, it, it just really shows how evil Pennywise is. And again, how Bill Skarsgård just makes the performance. So I really loved some of those moments where he just, he went there. I mean, there was no hesitation. He just went for it. Um, and that's what makes him so terrifying and creepy. It's great. As for James McAvoy, I hated James McAvoy in this film. I didn't really so much hate him as the performance, but I, I don't, he didn't sell Bill for me. He didn't really sell Bill as a character, like the older version of Bill. It didn't work for me at all. Um, and then also the fact that they revealed that Bill the entire time, right? Entire time, the first it and then this it, how he didn't save, uh, uh, he didn't save his brother, right? He didn't save. Georgie because he chose not to go outside and play with him he wasn't sick he just chose not to he didn't want to hang out with Georgie right his little brother when they revealed that I lost all sympathy for Bill I, I couldn't I was like are you kidding me like what seemed to be a perfect uh display of of true you know friendship within siblings and how he actually felt about Georgie and how much he needed to find his brother you know that was you know the that love that sibling love was you know the motivation for Bill's character and it was also what made him such a good leader in the first movie because he really was the one who actually lost something right and so for to me that's what makes the character that's what made him so good and i think that when you know he wanted to do the same for that other little boy from the restaurant it really showed you know that that really was the only shred of the old bill that was left in McAvoy's version but when they took that away it really destroys the character it just doesn't make sense to me i'm like why would you do that i mean i get that it's it's supposed to be like a twist like oh my gosh he he actually just let georgie die well i mean not really but he didn't hang out with georgie and that's what killed him and that's the true motivation it was just so disappointing to me i was like wow everything was built on a lie for the first movie and it just did not work so i i was not into james mcavoy's character at all i thought it just went south for me i just didn't like that reveal and i thought it truly destroyed the character as for the younger versions, because I said I was going to talk about them, the younger versions, they have flashbacks, right? But it's not flashbacks to after they destroy Pennywise or like maybe just flashbacks before the whole thing and, and you know, they do a callback or something. It's flashbacks to uh, before the, the main third act battle of the first movie. So it's after Kneebolt Street, but before the Pennywise battle, right, of the first film. 
I didn't think that made sense. I was like, wait a minute. So they did all this stuff over the summer, all these things, all these interactions, the underground clubhouse, all that stuff, but we just didn't see it, right? I mean, that was ridiculous. I mean, if that's really important, that should be in the first film, and the first film should have been three hours long instead of the second one. It just didn't make sense to me. I was like, really? You're gonna throw in all this stuff that we didn't see before here and then expect us to go along with it. I just wasn't having it, didn't like it at all, and I thought it was ridiculous. Also, I don't care if Jeremy Ray Taylor, you know, as uh, as um, Little Ben, I don't care if Little Ben, like, worked out or whatever, right? He, there's no way, there's no way that Ben built that entire underground clubhouse by himself. That's ridiculous. To dig a hole that big, you need, like, machinery. You need equipment. He doesn't have that. To build all the wood structure, and I'm pretty sure there was, like, electrical down there, too. I know adults that can't do that, so that's just ridiculous. Like, that's... It didn't make sense to me. I was like, why are we even seeing this? It just doesn't help. The de-aging was off for the characters too because the little cast grow, uh, grew so much. So no, I just didn't I didn't buy it, right? And then also the third act battle with Pennywise kind of ends on a lame note. I was like, okay, you have this cool third act battle and it kind of just ends like that. I mean, it makes sense because you're taking out someone who relies on fear and if you change the fear factor to his fears, to Pennywise's fears, I guess that would make sense to shrink him down, right? But I just wasn't buying it. Also, the mythology, it just does not work. I mean, again, like I said, it, it's too much. I'd rather you do none of the mythology because, again, they missed out on some stuff like the, the turtle god, right? The turtle god, where was he, right? So if you're not going to do all the mythology, don't do any of it, right? Because it would have been better just to leave Pennywise as a demon that just showed up, right? Instead of explaining he's an alien, the Indians were going to destroy him with a ritual, but the ritual doesn't work and it ends up killing them. And then he was, you know, it's just ridiculous. I'm like, maybe in the six hour cut that works and maybe there is a turtle God scene, who knows? But if you're not going to do it in the theatrical version and you're not going to go all the way, you might as well just not do it at all. Um, so overall, It Chapter 2 is a fun film to go see, especially after a dry summer season for movies. Uh, and it, it opened the fall beautifully for fall films. Uh, it's a creepy, mainstream, atmospheric horror film, but it has a lot of bumps in the road. I would be interested in seeing the six-hour version, because there is one confirmed by Andy Muschietti, who directed this film. Um, I'd be interested to see that version, just to see what they left out, if it's you know, three more hours worth of footage, then there's probably a lot of stuff that I would have rather seen, like more Beverly or, you know, more Pennywise stuff that would have been cool. Like more of the lore that kind of balances out the film, more of the flashbacks that make sense, right? Um, possibly. So that's stuff that I would rather see than some of the stuff we saw here. But what do you guys think of It Chapter 2? Do you like the movie? Do you not like the film? Um, and if you haven't seen it and skipped over my spoiler half and you're just now coming to here, uh, are you excited to see the film now that you kind of got a non-spoiler opinion about it? So don't forget to comment down below, like, favorite, and subscribe, and I will see you. Subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.